Today on the Grill Top Experience, we're going to wet cure some bacon and answer two questions people had about my last bacon video. Number one, do you really need all that salt? And number two, is pink curing salt really necessary when you're making bacon? We're going to find out coming up. This pork belly has already been skinned and is about nine pounds. To make it easy to use, I'm going to cut it in half. And each of these halves will fit perfectly in a gallon zipper bag. Now I'm going to make one of these with pink curing salt and the other without to see what the differences are because some of you are concerned about the health effects of the curing salt. In a gallon zipper bag, add one half cup of water and then a quarter cup of salt. Now don't forget the two tablespoons of brown sugar like I did, but you can add up to a quarter cup if you like some sweeter bacon. Mix it all up and create the brine. Then fold over the edges of the zipper bag and slide one of the pork bellies in. Then get as much air out of the bag as you can before you seal it up. Then repeat the process for the other belly by adding the water, sugar, salt, and this one has curing salt. Now I'm going to mark each one so I can remember which one is which and we can see the difference when we're done. Now whatever you do, don't turn it over, you're going to have permanent marker all over your countertop, but don't worry, a little rubbing alcohol and she's never going to know. Put the zipper bags in another container to catch leaks and put it in the fridge for six days to cure. Now it's well worth the wait because it's homemade bacon. Once each day you're going to take the bacon and flip them so that the one on top is the one on the bottom and it is upside down. This will ensure that bacon is going to cure evenly. You'll notice that the bags will have more liquid in them as the bacon cures. This just means that it's working. After the six days are up, take the bellies out of the bag and give them a good rinse to move the brine to keep them from getting too salty. Now I've placed a toothpick in the pink salt belly so I can keep them straight. You'll notice that the belly with the curing salt is pink and the one without is a little bit gray. Now at this point, it's a good idea to cut off a piece and fry it up to see if it's as salty as you like. Many recipes recommend soaking the bellies in clean water for about 30 minutes to remove as much of the brine as possible, and if they're too salty, leave them in a little bit longer. Take them out of the water and give them an enhanced pat down with a paper towel, being sure that you get both sides so everything's dry. Next, I'll grab my big plastic bin and place a cooling rack in the bottom. This will provide good airflow around the bellies and help them form a pellicle, which will help them absorb the smoke. I really like peppered bacon, and I'm adding about a tablespoon of pepper to each one, but feel free to pile it on since you're only going to be eating a thin slice. After that, throw it in the fridge without a lid for about a day to help dry it out. I got up early the next morning to fire up the ugly drum smoker, and I've learned from experience that it's easier to get the lower temperatures required for smoking bacon by starting before the sun comes up. Now here I've got a chimney with about 15 briquettes going, which I think will make it pretty easy to keep the temperature around 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 95 degrees Celsius. Now 200 degrees Fahrenheit might be difficult to maintain for some smokers, and it might be a good idea to give it a test run if you aren't sure how to keep it there. Once the charcoal is ashed over, I'll toss it in the fuel bin and let the smoker preheat for about an hour or so so all the bitter smoke burns off. Then the only thing to do is toss the bellies on the smoker for two to four hours until they reach an internal temperature of 145 degrees. To my surprise, these were done exactly two hours and I took them inside to admire. These bellies came out fantastic and each of them was mahogany color, 
There's no visible difference between the two, the one with the pink salt and the one without. After they've cooled, it's time to wrap them up in plastic wrap and throw them in the fridge to firm up enough for slicing. After four hours or more, get out your fancy cordless slicer and cut the slices as thick or as thin as you'd like. Now these were a bit soft and I should have waited a little bit longer to slice them. Now to see what the curing salt did. You'll notice the bacon on the left has a little gray near the bottom of the fat cap and the bacon on the right is pink throughout. That's the only difference that we could find. So I might skip the curing salt next time since botulism can't grow in the fridge or the freezer. Now if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos about grilling, smoking, and cooking with fire.